Hi, welcome back to the channel, Michelle, and today I'm going to be sharing our first week of homeschooling update, how things went, first impressions. So if you're new to my channel, I have a four-year-old doing pre-K level work, I have a seven-year-old doing second, third grade level work, and I have an 11-year-old in sixth grade this year, and I've made videos showing you my curriculum picks, I've made videos showing you my schedule. So I think showing you how it's going in the beginning and also updating, you know, doing updates throughout the year is helpful, but I did want to give a first impressions on some of the stuff we've been using. I'm not gonna go over every single thing, just things that have stood out to me and how our first week has gone. So the first one I'm gonna talk about is my four-year-old. So he got a new schedule, and one thing I wanted to mention is having a visual schedule for him this school year has been really beneficial. It's his first year having his own schedule. If you're new to my channel, I do have schedules posted on our calendar wall of all my kids and what they have to do. So I laminated his. So so he could cross it off with dry erase marker. He absolutely loves that. That is his, one of his favorite things to do. And I was concerned this year because when he had transitioned from preschool to more pre-K level work at the end of this past year, it took him about a week to adjust to the transition. He was a kid that really likes to do the same thing, but we had finished the letter of the week curriculum. We had to move on to something else and it took him about a week to get used to it. There was no transition issues this time. He absolutely loves what we're doing right now. One thing I did want to point out is this fun time phonics. He's really liking this. And something that he was struggling with was letter sound recognition in words. So segmenting and things like that, pulling out the different letter sounds. And that has helped. I think also core knowledge has helped with that. We started this core knowledge preschool units at the end of this past school year into summer into right now. If you're not familiar, Core Knowledge is completely free online. I'll link it down below. I have lots of videos talking about Core Knowledge on my channel because I think it's an awesome resource. One of the things that was gone over, one of the things presented in Core Knowledge Language Arts for preschool was that letter segmenting. And something that has really helped him is visually showing him the segmentation with my hand. So if I'm saying cat, k, a, and if I'm asking him for the first letter sound, we, he knows he's looking for a sound that's up here. But I'm looking for the last letter sound, he knows he's looking for the sound down there. And there's various movements taught within the Core Knowledge Preschool curriculum that really help, I think, those kids that need that little extra. We, of course, have the little tiles that we've done in the past. But I also think it's important that he be able to sound recognize, not just visually recognize the letters, but be able to pick out the letter sounds. And we did learn some of that in the reading reflex book we did this summer, but that has really helped him be able to pull those letter sounds out. But he's really enjoying the school year so far. Next would be, oh, and for school, he's been doing school, he started at 8.25 and he usually goes to 9 a.m. That's worked perfect for him. When he's done, he usually watches a leapfrog, which is about 25, 30 minutes long. That's worked out perfectly for him so I can work with my other kids. Next would be my seven-year-old. So my seven-year-old and my 11-year-old, their scheduled time, and I didn't have a specific schedule in mind. This is just how time happened to fall for both of them. We start at 9 a.m. and we've been, we finished this past week sometime between 12.30 and 1 p.m. every day. So that gives you kind of idea how our schedule went. So for her, I want to talk about first language lessons. This is something we started this summer and have been, it's one of those things that have been brought into the school year. This has gone really, really well for her. And it was funny because last week we had, not the first week of school, but the week prior to that, we had been camping and we didn't have school that week. That was our week off. And we came back, did this on Monday, and she was able to recite both the previous poems that she memorized in this without any issues at all, which with a kid with ADHD and working memory issues, that's really, really good. So I think this is helping her and she's enjoying it. For core knowledge, we started third grade, the language arts unit, only the listening and learning strand. Core knowledge does have their language arts in the early grades separated to skills. So learning to read, phonics, that type of thing. And then they have listening and learning, which is contextual knowledge, vocabulary, things like that. So we start with Wind in the Willows. It's funny, I didn't remember, because I've read it in the past, but probably when I was a child, how um, intricate the language in it, 
in it is, is not only do it, we had to pull out different things like what does oh bother mean, which it does tell you in the teacher guide um, what these different you know British slang words mean, but it's not holding back on the language and the vocabulary, which I really, really like. I love that core knowledge introduces higher level vocabulary than just basic, you know, what I think a third grader would probably be exposed to. And she's liking the story, and I do like that I'm able to, because I've been looking for this particular child on where to go for writing in the future. And I've been looking at narration, dictation, all that bundle of stuff, and something that's worked really well that I can implement in Cornology is Cornology has questions after you read whichever section of the story that you're reading, and it's set up in a way that some of them are just comprehension questions, but a lot of them are um, asking them different parts of the story, pulling out different elements of it. So what I've been having her do with that is, I've been having her um, just answer in a complete sentence. So she's used to answering these types of questions, but after you know first language lessons and looking more into you know narration and dictation, I'm just having her make sure she's answering in a complete sentence. So I've been able to incorporate some of the things I've learned um, with my reading into core knowledge naturally, and that's just to prepare her for writing in the future. But she's done really well. The only change we really made from summer to uh, this school year was we added core knowledge third grade. And she has no trouble doing all the things that I talked about in my schedule and getting that done. We have had no issues. We didn't over schedule or anything like that onto my 11 year old. So for her, she started Lightning Literature, that's been going well. We are still in the review part of grammar, so that's really easy for her. The Wizard of Oz, this is a book she's familiar with, so that's easy for her, but it's going well. And my concern was, we have both Lightning Literature and IEW going at the same time. She does not do the writing component of Lightning Literature and stuff, she does IEW. And that's been working fine schedule-wise. She, the first day, I would say Monday, when I was going over her schedule, she knew what her schedule was prior to this, but just reminding her of what her schedule was for that day and kind of pulling out the things and looking at them, she did feel a bit overwhelmed, I'll be completely honest. She thought it was a lot, but I sat her down, I explained to her that one, she's capable of these things. It looks like a lot, but once you get started, it's going to go really quick because it's a little tidbit here and there. It's not like we're spending 45 minutes on one section. She's moving on quite quickly. And after that, I gave her a few minutes. She sat down with her stuff and 10 minutes into it, she was flying. So just that reminder of when they need that little nudge and when to back off. That was not a moment to back off. That she is capable at this. I'm very mindful of the things I choose for my kids and the scheduling I do for them. And she was completely capable and she was and did and realized that, which was really nice. So there's been no issues or conflicts with fitting everything into her schedule. One of the things I did is we went with 2B instead of 1B and that's just because she's used IEW for multiple years. The I did have her test out this past summer the 1B level and she was flying through it. So I was like, let's move on. And it's gone well. She's on week five right now because we did start it during the summer and she's usually, she watches the videos the first two days. She has her paper completely written for me. I think this last paper she wrote three paragraph paper and she had that done by Thursday, handed in, corrections. The only thing she had to do for Friday was the corrections I made on her paper. But it's going really well. She, again, knows the format. She knows the style. She can fly through it, which is really nice. One of the things we also started was the next level of Michael Clay Thompson. So far, we this has just been all review. We have not encountered anything that she hasn't already covered so she's kind of like mom i know this rolling her eyes on me <laughs> at me right now so yeah we got to we're at level or level two the parts of the sentence so i think she's rolling her eyes at me for the level one parts of speech because that was all pretty much the first level of michael clay thompson so i think once we get um to part two maybe it'll be more it'll be new information and not so i know this already mom but all of that has been going well. One thing that surprised me that has been going really well is Phonetic Zoo. She did her first lesson of Phonetic Zoo this past week. And one of the things I did for her is I set it up on my computer. Now, the program suggests you use headphones. And I wanted to be able to hear my daughter doing it for a couple reasons. 
one it's easy for her to because there's the first track is them saying the word and saying it in a sentence and you write down the word the next track is the corrections for those individual words it's very easy for a child to just skip the corrections and it looked like they did it so i wanted to make sure that we went through it and i was hearing her listen to the jingle listen to all of that um, the words writing down the words because that is an important step although fnegzu is meant to be independent I think with independent work, it's something you work up to, and it's also a level of trust with your child. So she knows that I expect her to actually do the work as it's written, not you know skip or cheat or get lazy with it, because that does happen. Naturally, kids will kind of ease into that if you're not checking their work or if you're not doing your job as the teacher, it's very easy for them to slack off. If you're slacking off, they can slack off pretty easily. So I think that's really important when we're talking about independent work, especially with our kids who are getting into middle school, high school, that you're you know, preparing them for that level of independence. You're not just expecting them you know, magically in fifth grade to be able to do all these things that you need to prepare them for independence. And two, there needs to be a level of trust that you can trust that what you're giving them, they're going to do and they're going to do it right. So that has gone really well. I was surprised because I didn't know which way she would go with Phonetic Zoo, but she likes the, well, she doesn't like the jingles, she, but she will say them. So I know they're working. And then when she's um, correcting her words, she's saying each letter out loud while she's looking at what she wrote. So I really do think that is making a difference. And we started lesson one by Monday and by Thursday, she had three correct um, word lists. So she's able to move to the next lesson, which was the whole point. So that's been going really well for her so far. And like I said, although she had that little hiccup of um, feeling overwhelmed in the beginning, once she got into her work and tried it, it went really well. And one of the things I want to say about you know preteens is you got to work with <laughs> the hormones and the attitude. And especially our first day, she was a little crabby and had nothing to do with school. She was crabby because her the shirt, because we take first day pictures, the shirt she wanted to wear was in the dryer, not dry yet. And I was like, it's fine, we can take your picture later. We don't have to do it right before school. And she was just flustered with that. And then her phone wasn't charging. And when I say phone, she has my husband's old phone that can, um, it's pretty much like an iPod. She can listen to music and she has a couple apps on there but it's not for calling or texting or any of the typical things you would see for a phone it's parental control and everything like that but it wasn't charging correctly so she was just irritated so you know after her first 10 minutes and she got into her work i just made her a little mock coffee and used some cold foam on there and just set it gently in front of her and walked away and you know within 10 minutes her attitude was completely different so my go-to when she's getting a little flustered or overwhelmed or emotional is to, you know, give her a little treat, give her some chocolate, give her some coffee, something to, you know, just refresh her. And that has really helped. So let's go into group work. So the couple things we're gonna talk about, we were supposed to start our election study with Mint and Bloom this past week, and we did not. And that's solely because the candidates have changed. So when they first put out, they put the first two weeks out of the election study and you can get it through their newsletter or purchase it. If you get it through the newsletter, it's free or you can purchase it through Mint and Bloom. But the first two have the original candidates, Biden and Trump, and now that has changed. So they're gonna be updating the units. So I'm waiting for the updated units before getting into it because the first unit is talking about the individual candidates running for president. So we did not do that. But the things we did get to are, I'm going to talk about art. Art went really well. This very, these Glencoe books very much remind me of the Harcourt art books we were using prior. Quick, easy, I like that it's in more in depth. It's more the language of what you would see in middle school. We haven't gotten to an actual activity yet. That is the second lesson, but it was a lot of just critiquing art, more like an art study for the first lesson. So did it with both my seven and 11 year old. No problems there, it's going well. Next, I'm gonna talk about core knowledge history and core knowledge science. So we did, we were doing core knowledge United, United, 
We are doing Core Knowledge United States History this year. Last year we did United States History using O Freedom, and I decided to do a two-year cycle for United States History, because one, it's super long, and two, there's a lot to cover, and I want to get a lot of perspectives in it when I talk about United States History. So last year we used O Freedom to kind of give the other perspective where the story's not told. So I wanted to bring in Core Knowledge United States History this year to cover more and go more in depth because I'm sure there's things in core knowledge that weren't in O Freedom. So we did the first full week of core knowledge. And one thing I'm doing different this year with core knowledge is I'm actually following the pre-made lists. So when you look at the teacher guides, they have pre-made lists like this that break down by day for you exactly what you're gonna do. And for the United States history, they have it if you're going to do both volumes in one year or if you're gonna do vol volume, both volumes in two years. They have both those lesson plans available to you. Uh, or you can make your own. In the past, I've, they have little blank boxes. You can fill, fill in the lesson plans yourself. I've done that in the past. Because I'm doing so many core knowledge units, I'm doing core knowledge language arts with my four-year-old, my seven-year-old. We're doing core knowledge history, core knowledge science. I thought I'd make it easier myself and just follow the pre-laid plans, and it's actually really worked well. One thing I would suggest you do is, of course, look through it and understand how the lesson plans work. And if you want a video on that, I will gladly make you guys a video of how to walk through things like core. I do have science, but I do not have the United States history. This is aimed at seventh grade, but you know, it's not just reading from the student reader every day. You can see here next week, we have things called learning labs, which are looking at the questions in the book or writing prompts and things like that. But so far, I've been really impressed with the United States history. The first lesson we did was why do we study history, which I think is a really good introduction to history and the way they frame it, that it's not just, you know, so we don't make the same pa past mistakes in the future. But if we can understand the foundation of how our country was created, how does that affect us now? And you're more easily to see, you're more easily able to see certain systems in action, how that affects people today, if you understand the foundation of you know, how things were created. So that was really good. I like that introduction of you know, what is history? Why do we study history? And then it goes into looking at when we're looking at why we study history, and one of the things that core knowledge brings up, which I thought was great, is it says when you're looking at history, whether that be textbooks or books you're just reading, you know, the first thing you need to look at is whose story is being told and you know, what perspective is being presented, whose story is left out of this, and why is this a full perspective? And it's just engaging you with the text more to really think more broadly about what's being represented. And I think that's really important, especially when we homeschool, to bring different perspectives in. And I, this again, this curriculum is completely free, and I've just been really, really impressed with it so far. And we talked about indigenous tribes, and it's great because my kids do have a lot of prior knowledge with this, both with O Freedom last year and then every November we do indigenous studies. So they were able to recall the read aloud book we read last year on the family and how their um, indigenous family was affected by smallpox and how it destroyed their village. They were able to pick up on that when we talked about the um, European diseases spreading in indigenous colonies. We were able to talk about, you know, longhouses. And they, they were able to recall all this information, which is great. And it's, I think it's helping in retrieval practicing and like cementing it in their brain. But because we used O Freedom and we have indigenous studies, they are able to pull that history because they know the people of it. They know the stories of the people, which I think is, you know, history is the story of people. When you can more easily connect to those individual stories, it really helps you remember what history is about and what happened during that time. So again, been really happy with core knowledge history so far, but I will update as we go with that. Next, core knowledge science. Now that went really well. We do that Thursday and Friday. We did, again, I'm following the same lesson plans that they already have laid out. One thing I did go through when I do my weekly prep on Sundays, no, on Saturdays, I go through and write any additional things I'll need. So if there's a video, Again, they're linked in the online resources. You just have to click on them. Or if there is any supplies I need, they do have a supply list that they provide for you for each lesson in here. 
So I go through and make sure I have those supplies at hand. But for the first uh, lesson we did, we're looking at investigating matter. So we set up little stations or demonstrations or experiments, however you want to phrase it. And we looked at different states of matter and we looked at, you know, we had a magnet station and looked at things that were magnetic or not magnetic and why. And we had a conductivity station. We had um, salt and sugar and water and how that dissolved in the different um, liquids. And we had, you know, ice and in different types of cups and how insulation works. So it was a nice introduction. Like one thing I really do like that Cornelage is doing a really good job in is presenting it as a question. His, whether it be history or science, it's presenting it as a question, something to be solved. And you know, when we're talking about history, we're talking about you know the history of people and you know why these things happen, what happened to these cultures or groups of people. In science, we're looking at the question of why does it do it? Why does something do this? Or why is it this way? And I think that's a great approach to it. And I think that's, you know, the approach probably historians and actual scientists take. They're trying to investigate, they're investigators. So I really do like that approach to it. So like I said, things went really well. Uh, we covered everything we need to cover and there was no pushback. There was no crying about it. Everyone was really happy. It was one of those really like perfect weeks of homeschooling when knock on wood, cause you know, next week will be horrible. But I think it's important to talk about when we do have those good weeks and why was our start so good? And I think our start was so good because one, I was prepared. I had gone through and printed the things. You can see I had the teacher guides. I had all the activity guides for the core knowledge units. I had read the teacher guides, the lessons to make sure I was prepared to teach. And I was also realistic with what my kids were capable. Like I said, my 11 year old, she was a little hesitant, but once she got into it, she knew she could do all this and I knew she could do it all. So I'm realistic with what I'm putting in front of my kids and I'm prepared to teach it. They're also prepared to learn. They have their visual schedules. We've gone over what they're gonna be doing. And also something that's really helpful is that we don't change curriculum a lot. A lot of the things have changed this, or stayed the same. We've done the same math, we've done all about reading for you know my first two kiddos. We've done multiple core knowledge units in different subjects. So they're familiar with how the curriculum works. They don't have any issues with transitioning and they know what's expected from them. I think once kids know their expectations, it's easier for them to meet those expectations than just you know not being prepared or throwing something at them and they have no idea. It takes a time to adjust to a curriculum. But when you're familiar with the format of a certain curriculum, it's a lot easier to adjust to it. So I do think that helps. I also think that it helped that I was not intentional about self-care, but I did a really awesome job of self-care. And so did my kids this past week. Like I said, they were done by 12.30 or one. And after they were done, um, and that's w including lunch. So we usually have you know 30 to 45 minutes for lunch. That's including lunch. So they had had lunch, they had done school, and usually they would go over to the neighbor's house and play, and they'd be outside for like four hours. My four-year-old would usually stay inside with me because he would nap and he would also just, it was really hot, he didn't want to be outside. So my, uh, my older two girls would you know, be roller skating and biking and doing all the things that kids do at those ages and just be, they just had a lot of friend time and we went to the park with friends and they had a lot of that being filled up and those needs being met. And even my four-year-old, when he stayed inside, we played games. And one of the days that relates to my self-care too is I got the Thistle and Biscuits watercolor. I will put a picture up here because it's somewhere in the other room. I got that for myself because I was interested in learning how to do watercolor. I've never done watercolor or really anything much in art. I wanted to learn for myself. So I was sitting down doing it and my four-year-old decided to join me and he got his, I got his watercolors out and a paper for him and we just had fun for an hour watercoloring. But I think they were intentional about their self-care and just having fun and being kids, but also getting the work done. My kids very much strive on Let's get up, get it done, and then spend the rest of the day doing whatever we want. And I think that's a good motivator that, you know, school is a priority. And after we're done with it, have fun, do whatever you want. And the same thing with me, because we were done by 1 p.m., I was able to do a lot of things I enjoy. And something I've been doing a lot lately is reading. And I've been making an effort to read different books than I normally do, because I'm a big 
nonfiction reader, I've been trying to branch out. And one of the things I picked up on Prime Day was this uh, Bridgerton set. I watched this show and I really, really enjoyed the show. So I thought I would give the books a try. And I read, I'm on the last one, and I'm three quarters through. But I read all these in a week. And it was really good. So I spent like three hours one day reading. But that's really important to take time and actually nourish yourself. I think that, you know, plopping in front of the TV, those are there's days for that too. But I think this is also really life-giving to me and something I enjoy. And one of the things I did was I had my subscription box. I've, uh, Mama Librarian talked about this subscription box. And I'll link her video down below. It's called Once Upon a Young Ad or Once Upon a Book Club. And they have different boxes for middle grade, young adult, and different genres and things like that. So they had a sale. So I got three different boxes. I got the young adult romance one for myself. I got the middle grade or young adult. I forget what my daughter's is, but it's for her age level box for her. And then I got the Christmas box for me. It's really cool. So it came with a book and this was really good. I really enjoyed this book as well. But throughout the book, there's post-its um, and it tells you to open a gift and, and the gift relates to something in the book. And it was just fun reading, which I already really enjoy. But also throughout the week, I got little presents, which I'm one of those people that I don't buy things for myself. So it's actually really fun. Um, so I'll give you a little sneak peek of one of the presents. So this is a necklace that came with it that relates to the book. But it was just really fun. So I was spending time doing things I wanted to do because we were done with school by 1 p.m. I know a lot of people don't start till way later. But when you start till way later, you spend most of your day doing school. If you prioritize, get it done right away, then everybody has a lot more free time to pursue different interests they have. But I think having that freedom for myself to explore things like watercolor or reading, spending time with friends was really helpful and definitely re-energized my energy with homeschooling and also I was kind of because I was doing so much reading I wasn't on social media I wasn't watching TV I wasn't watching YouTube very much I wasn't on Facebook and I think that's actually kind of healthy <laughs> especially with a lot of YouTube videos coming out now um, a lot of people are already changing their curriculum and they haven't even started yet and I think it's just good to step away for a while and um, really go to the things that serve you and bring you know more energy more life back into you instead of draining you or frustrating you or making you second guess the things you've already chosen so all those things really contributed to an awesome week i think the kids all did well i had a really good week so i will continue to update things as we go along and if you have any questions leave them in the comments below if not thank you for watching